this is Sandy Lemke from freewebsitetutorials.com. Today we're going to learn how to choose website keywords using the Google AdWords Keyword Tool and Microsoft Excel. Why would you want to use these? Well, when I first started my business, I did not have a lot of money to pay for software and things like Word Tracker, so I had to figure out a free way to select keywords whenever I was doing an article or creating a web page. So when I found out that Google AdWords Keyword Tool was free, and I considered the fact that I already knew Microsoft Excel, I decided to put the two together and have come up with a way to get through keywords quickly and pretty efficiently. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Just as an example, I'm going to use party invitations. If I wanted to do a page on party invitations, I know that that's too general. I need to figure out some keywords that are you know, better for me to write about. So I'm just going to type in my general idea and notice that I'm just leaving this the way it is when you come in here, descriptive words or phrases if you're not used to using this tool. Put your general word in there and hit get keyword ideas. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to come up here and you're going to see that there are four columns already defaulted. Keywords, competition, and a couple of search columns. What I want to do is I want to add in cost per click because I put Google AdSense on my site and if you do or are planning to do that I recommend that you look at the cost per click when you're picking your um, keywords because you want to pick the ones that have the higher number if you're going to go through this hassle of picking the right words you want to make sure that you've got profitable ones from a cost per click perspective so anyway I don't spend a lot of time in here once I put the, the word in I dump the data right smack into Excel and the way that I do that first of all I just wanted to show you is there's two lists one at the top and then you can see that there's one at the bottom what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump both those into Excel by just hitting that CSV to Excel I'm trying to hurry through this so that I can fit all this in this video so I apologize if I'm going fast so I'm just going to copy this and I've already got a template created in here and basically it's got the same headings that you just saw in uh, the selector tool and then I've added a couple more that will make sense once I start to process through this stuff then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and get that second list copy to Excel and copy this guy and paste it onto the bottom of my template and now what have I done? All I've done is I've dumped all that data you just saw in Google AdWords into Excel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to briefly show you how I process through these lists of keywords in Excel. I'm going to show you the manual way to do it but just so you know I use macros to do this. Uh, basically if you're not familiar with macros it's just recording. When you do steps one after another the same ones repeatedly you can record what your steps are and then hit the stop button and it will save that those functions as a macro so that the next time when you come in you can just hit a button and it'll process it exactly the same way and just repeat the same steps that you did the first time so even though I'm going to show you this manually just understand that I create macros for myself that I can just whip through a gigantic list of keywords in a matter of minutes uh, so how do we do that let me just show you manually if you're familiar with Excel you're probably familiar with filters if you're not what you do is you select the top list or the, I'm sorry the top row and you just go data filter auto filter and that's just gonna help us filter through this a little bit and you can do it by column which is really nice so I have you're gonna come up with your own uh, acceptable thresholds but I have thresholds for each one of these columns that I find acceptable for different reasons for example I'm not gonna bother writing a page or an article about a keyword that is less than 50 cents cost per click you might decide that you don't want to bother with anything that's less than a dollar whatever whenever whatever your threshold is what you can do is go into your little filter here and go custom and you're gonna say give me only the ones that are greater than 50 cents and now it's filtered out anything that's less than 50 cents and so then I come into competition you don't want to go for a keyword that's got a gigantic amount of competition already if it's like this where it's a hundred percent saturation why would you want to bother on that kind of a keyword 
or even 93%, no matter how good you are at writing and putting keywords on a page, you know, you're just setting yourself up for failure if you try to go with some of these higher ones. So I just filter those out. So I go custom and I say, give me the ones that are less than, say, 74%. You could pick whatever you want, but okay, so now we're getting lower. And even, I think I'm going to go lower. See all these 73% in there? This list is still pretty big. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to go not less than 74, less than 73. And now it gets rid of all those 73s that you just saw. These two columns have to do with search volume. How many people searched in the last month? That's this first one. How many people searched on average in the last 12 months? Depending on what you're doing, you might want to use, if you've got seasonal stuff, you might want to care about what people did last month. Mostly people use, I think, this um, over the last 12 months just to get kind of a high level thing, high, high level snapshot. So I'm going to go uh, custom. Just show me the search volume that is greater than, say, 200. So I want 200 searches or more. Now you can see that this has cut my list down quite a bit. It's still pretty big though. So what I do is I've created these two additional columns to help me filter even more. I use this good column to kind of run through my list the very first time at a high level and I just look at the words. I'm not really even looking at the statistics. I'm looking at the words to see is this a word that I could actually fit into a sentence and not sound you know, terribly grammatically incorrect. Um, is it a word that I'm even interested in writing about? Uh, and so I just at a high level, I go through here and I might say, okay, party invitation ideas. Yeah, that sounds like something that might work. Do I want about? Do I want to write about Western party invitations? Okay, maybe that one. I'm going through here quick, but you see what I'm doing. I would spend obviously more time on this. Sample party invitations. Okay, maybe I would spend more time on this normally. But I'm just what I'm trying to do is just keep the ones that are you know contenders. Um, and the ones that I think are contenders, I'm just putting a one in the column. The reason why is because now I'm going to go, just show me the ones that have the one. And now I'm way, cut it way down. That's when this best column comes in. The best column is when, okay, now that I've got a smaller list, I can really start looking at this into some detail. And this is when I would look at the cost per click. I would look at the competition you know and look at the search volume and I would say okay this party invitations ideas okay that might be a good file name what I normally do is when I'm doing a web page I look for five keywords one that's going to be my file name and four that are going to be my supplemental uh, keywords and if I'm doing an article I'll usually look for seven to ten words so I like the way that this party invitations idea looks. This is probably going to be one of the ones that I pick for my file name. It's got you know decent search volume. The competition is a little steep, but I think with the right technique of placing keywords on the page and you know writing that I can overcome some of this competition and hopefully get up in the search engines. And the cost per click you know isn't high that high, but it's decent. So I would say I, I like this one and. Uh, you know, I would go through the same process. I'd look at these different, here's another one with some pretty high search volume. I might pick that one. Wine party invitations, I like that subject. I might pick that one. It's got decent volume. Competition's a little high, but not as high as some of the others. I might pick one of these other ones that doesn't have as high of competition. And I would do the same thing and pick five of these guys. And then what I'd do is say, just show me the ones. So this is exactly what you want. You want to cut down the list of keywords that you have to something that's more manageable. So the final step that I do is to decide to delve deeper into some of these keywords or just put another keyword idea back into Google AdWords. So if I wanted to know more about party invitations, I would just put that back into Google AdWords and follow this exact same process. To speed this up quite a bit though, I use macros which I've created for myself. I can get through huge lists of keywords in no time. I'm going to be doing a video on that which will help you a lot with this process. Hopefully you find this whole process a lot easier, uh, save you some money and time.